Hello everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today, I've got a pretty interesting cook here. Well, I wouldn't say too interesting, it's pretty simple. We're gonna do some boneless pork butt on the Weber kettle with the Cajun Bandit rotisserie ring. Then over here, we're gonna do pork belly candy bites on this dual rack system. I don't wanna start them just right yet, but I still have to get this uh, here going. Here, it's just for looks for now. I plan on doing the one hour ribs in here later today. And I also have something else to show you. And over here is, is a 14, inch, that's the uh, WSM 14, the bottom section with an 18 inch kettle on the top. I'm just doing a controlled test. Hold on, as you can see here, we're doing 128 degrees. I got the probes in the center. Like I said, this is just a controlled test because I want this as my low and slow. I know you guys know I'm hot and fast. So I'm just gonna let this thing go and this will be my low and slow cooker right here for now. I don't wanna go hot and fast because I don't wanna burn the bottom of this bowl here, which I don't think it would hurt. There's no water pan, but we'll get into details on that later. I just wanna give you an idea of what's going on there. Okay, so. I'm not going to show the seasoning of the meats because I know you guys seen tons of my videos where I season all the meat. It's pretty much all the same. But today's ingredients is going to be when that pork butt's done and shredded, you got it. Mr. Phil, Phil and Florence, we're going to try his new barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah. Then for the pork belly candy bites, we're going to use the Root Boy Cooks number two rub also we are going to use on the pork butt some joe's barbecue house i don't know if i'm too close there this is my spg and we're going to use a joe's barbecue house hot rub these are glass jars they're sealed these are brand new just playing around with some seasonings here no they're not for sale I'll probably give them to some of the YouTubers out here. Uh, and I might even do some giveaways on the channel with this rub. I think you guys will really enjoy it because combined, these two are amazing. I'm telling you, they're really good. I've been working on these for a very long time. Uh, one last thing I'm trying to master is my AP rub, which is the all-purpose rub. So, again, candy bites, rotisserie, boneless pork butt, one hour ribs and just a tester thing. All right, everybody, here's just a quick look of the rotisserie pork butt. We're gonna keep this at a steady 350 degrees. And there we go. Simple basket on each side, full of charcoal, hot. We got a little uh, drip pan down there. And there you have it. This one here has the Joe's Barbecue House uh, SPG and the hot rub. Cannot wait to see how this turns out. And here, I'm going to leave these vents closed because that's a pretty hot fire in there with those two baskets. But if I ever start losing temperature, I can always crank it up. All right, I went ahead and got all the pork candy bites seasoned up with the Root Boy Cooks rub. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Wow, look at all that goodness. Ooh, man. And if you've noticed, it's the dual rack system for the Weber kettle. All I got here is a couple chunks of the apple wood, some charcoal. And we're just gonna leave the bottom vent wide open, top vent wide open for now. Uh, and then I'll adjust the bottom vent accordingly to keep the temperatures approximately 275. And hopefully in a couple hours I'll be able to pull them and... Okay, let's move on over here to the rotisserie side. Get you guys a look at that. Look at that baby. We're about an hour and a half in or so. Man, look at that color. That's beautiful. 
All right, everybody. So I was really concerned about my uh, stainless steel here on my, uh, like the Cajun banded uh, stacker ring and uh, my Cajun banded steel door and my Cajun banded rotisserie ring. If you notice in my other videos, they were looking pretty, pretty rough. I mean, as far as the color on them, you know, with stains and everything. I'm telling you, this barkeeper's friend, here's the liquid version of it. And of course, here's the powder version of it. I use it in my kitchen sink and all that. Uh, but I didn't think about using it on these uh, accessories here. And as you can see, they look like brand new. You go back and look at my other videos, you'll see that, you know, I had some drips here, some stains. About half of this, three quarters of this was all like um, discolored from the heat and everything. Uh, you know, just basically all around just dirty. Um, <laughs> this bars keeper friends is this is the trick to getting this stuff clean I'm telling you uh, and I even used actually uh, my ring my stacker ring it wasn't that it wasn't that bad so I used a liquid on that with a sponge <laughs> knocked this right out now my rotisserie ring it was pretty filthy so after I went through it with this I went through it with the powder <laughs> it, it's um this is a cleanser polish and this is a soft cleaner, but if it's not that bad or it's not staying that bad, use the liquid. If it's pretty nasty, use this stuff, the powder. So, no, this company does not pay me to, to advertise for them or nothing. I did not get this. I bought this stuff on my own. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys, if you want your stuff looking clean, well, there you have it. Especially that thing. My God. Okay, that's all I wanted to share with this part. All right, everybody. We are two hours in, and I would like to give you a look at what's going on here. Let's go ahead and get a close-up on the color, and let's go ahead and get an internal temp. See what we're looking like. Holy crap. It's already feels tender, and we're at 143, uh, 143. 148-ish, wow, not bad. So I'm not even gonna wrap this, guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it go till the end, till it's probe tender or about you know 200 degrees, we'll check it. All right, now let's go ahead and check on the candy bites. These here are about an, mm, not quite an hour, but as you can see, they're looking good. Again, the dual rack system. On the Weber kettle. Our coals are looking mighty fine. I don't see having to replace them anytime soon. And here on this, whatever you want to call it, concoction I built up is working just fine. We are about two hours in and we got a fair amount of coals left in there. I just want to see how long it'll burn. Like again, this vent here, I had to turn it down to about halfway once everything got heated up but it's maintaining steady temperatures here. Oops, sorry, put this on the right way. Well, it was reading at 225. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So she's been holding steady. I'm pretty impressed. Again, I'm gonna take this and this is gonna be my low and slow cooker. And hot and fast, or should I say blazing hot and fast. All right, let's go ahead and check on these candy bites. We are now two and a half hours in. Just like to give you guys a look at what the color looks like and how we're gonna <clears throat> pull them off right now. I'm gonna put them in two half catering trays or tin foil, whatever you wanna call it, them foil trays. And hopefully I could get two of them to fit inside here. Here we are two and a half hours in on this boneless pork butt. Like you guys take a little look here. I also want to get an internal temp while we're here and see what we're doing. All right, let's see what we got. Man, that bark is looking good. So we are reading that 171, 184, 189. Uh-oh, yeah, we're getting, oh man, look at that. Well, that's probably just fat. Oh, let's see here, 185, okay, yeah. 
We're gonna let this keep going until she's finished and then I'm just gonna wrap it and let it sit for an hour. So I'll come back and I'll show you what the candy bites look like when they're on the dual rack system in the foil pans. All right, well here I'm just gonna show you what all I added to this goodness is some brown sugar, honey, and some stick of butter. Get you a little close up there. I'm gonna go ahead and foil these with uh, heavy duty aluminum foil and get them on the smoker for at least another hour. All right, everybody. As you can see, I haven't added any coals from that charcoal chimney we added in the beginning. I may add more. I'm not 100% sure, and it's fine if we do because it's not gonna be contacting any of the meat. The meat has plenty of smoke on it already. And as you can see, there's a foil pan there at the bottom, one here at top. All right, so we are five hours in. Let me show you here real quick. If you guys can see that or not. That right there in the blue. So we're almost five hours in. And here I'd like to show you what temps we're running at. If this thing will pick it up. But she's been running. Got it. Man, I hate when I can't get the angle right. Here we go with the dirt bikes or the Harleys, which is okay. So that's what we've been averaging for the past, well, I'd say four hours anyway. And it's just incredible. Uh, the smoke that you see coming out of there is because I just add a wood chunk to it just to have uh, smoke in the air because it smells good. And here's how many coals that we had burnt so far. Let's see if I can get in there. So we're pretty, not quite burnt out, but there's still some coals in there. I'm gonna guess there's about at least another hour worth of coals. I'm sure adding the wood, the wood chunk will help, but regardless. I hate these stock doors. I wonder if Cajun Bandit makes one for the 14. I don't think they do, but we're gonna find out. But as you can see, we're wide open at the bottom. The other two vents are closed. So yeah, I'm thinking I got me a new low and slow cooker. Be perfect for, I don't know, a small brisket. Uh, let's go and look on the inside. Might be good for a small brisket. What do you guys think? Comment below your thoughts. Maybe I could do a flat or just a point. I don't think a whole one's gonna fit. Maybe a, a 10 pounder or a 13 pounder might fit in there. We'll have to see. Oh, there goes the alarm. Yeah, very nice. I'm actually digging this setup. And I haven't mentioned before, but you know, on the Weber kettles, they have the the one touch system and the where you could uh, move the lever to swipe the ashes. Well, those three bladed, uh, the ash drain, whatever you want to call it, that goes into the pan. I pulled that out. It's all stripped out. Uh, one day I'll uh, take this thing apart and show you guys exactly what I've done to it. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but hey, it's all Weber. And the uh, 14 inch is just way too small for me, so I wanted a low and slow cooker. Well, here it is. All right, we are four hours in. I'd like you guys to take a look at what's going on here. Oh man, look at that bark. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and Check our internal temps. 192, 2058. Whoa, my God, this is so pro timber. 206, 200. Okay, and just by probing, it's uh, this baby is done. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and wrap it and let it sit for one hour and all I had to do was add coals one time to this entire cook, which they were about right there when I added the other coals to it. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this baby up and we'll be back when it's pulling time. All right, everybody, let's get an update here. We are five hours and 35 or 36 minutes in and we had dropped some temps here. 
Uh, crap. Let's see if you guys can see that here. Yeah, let me get a better angle. So we had dropped down. So I'm gonna say a good five hours and 15 minutes. I'll go ahead and show you what the coals look like. I didn't add any coals to it. We might got about, I don't know, I could probably add more charcoal and get more time out of it, but the whole point of this was to see what the stock fire ring with this 14 inch WSM could do. So I would say a solid five hours, five hours and 15 minutes on one burn. And that's not too bad. Cause if you're wrapping, you can always add more coals. You don't have to worry about it over smoking or anything like that. Getting that bitter taste or whatnot. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Comment in the comment section below and tell me your thoughts on this kind of ugly thingy going on here. We got to get a name for this. Maybe you guys could come up with a name. For, I, 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 it, Muffin Top comes up to my name. <laughs> comes up. Um, so I, I don't know. You guys tell me your thoughts on it. It did hold steady temps. Very nice. If you guys like to see a breakdown on this whole thing, let me know. But pretty soon here, uh, probably the sun will probably be down by the time I do this video on this, uh, uh, the one hour ribs, because I want to wait for my, uh, for more guests to show up before I fire this up. But I did set it up. I did put the rotisserie ring on. Got the rods put in and I'm about ready to go. So I'll give you guys a little sneak peek what's going on here. Oh man, look at that. It's already soaked down with some Pam. Gonna season this baby up. I'll show you guys how much charcoal I'm gonna put in it. And we're gonna fire this thing up and here in, I don't know, maybe in a couple hours or so, we'll see. I just don't want to, I want the ribs to be fresh off the grill or off the smoker uh, when my kids' buddies show up. All right, we shall return. All right, everybody. I went ahead and all I did was added some brown sugar. I'm sorry, um, some uh, barbecue sauce, which is just Sweet Baby Ray's. I'm just going to let these things tack up. Sorry for the, how light it is out here. But you guys can get a good look at what they look like so far. So yeah, it's some honey and uh, barbecue sauce. That's all I added and a little bit of seasoning of the Root Boy Rubs Cook. Rubs. And we're gonna leave these in here for approximately, we're gonna go about 15 minutes and see how everything is going. We might mix them around in there because I want that sauce down in there to get real thick. Oh yeah. This is gonna be really good. All right, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and see how this thing pulls apart. It's actually been resting for about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 45 minutes. But let's just see what she does. Look at that. It's still piping hot even after that hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. Actually too hot to touch. But as you can see, she's breaking apart and looking good. Uh, I guess it's an okay smoke ring. I've seen better. But there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and get my fork and get this baby pulled apart. Golly, is it so hot. But she's coming apart really nice. Well, that'll conclude the boneless uh, pork butt. I'm sorry, shoulder. Thank you, dear. Well, you know what? While I'm here, I might as well go ahead and get a taste test. Mm. Let's see here. Hmm. Wow. That's really good. I love the flavor of the bark when you do that hot and fast. But there you go, guys. I shall return when I get to the candy bites and the, then we're going to start the one hour ribs. See you guys in a little bit. All right. 
Now it's time to try filling Florence's sauce. I went ahead and split it up, an unsauced one in one pan, and we're gonna put piff sauce in this pan and give this a shot. Oh, I've been waiting for this all day long. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and get this mixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and get a smell of this. Mm, mm, mm. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and toss this up. Some really nice color. Oh yeah. All right, Phil, here we go, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a taste right now. Oh yeah, I'll take that right there. Mmm, very good, Phil. Wow, that is really good. That's some really good um, vinegar-based sauce right there. Wow. I'm not just saying that, Phil. I'm being dead honest. That has to be some of the best vinegar sauce I've ever had. I tried making it. It was okay. Um, but this is phenomenal, man. It's got a nice little kick to it. Very, very little kick. I like I like spicy stuff though. I like it. I like it real hot. Hey, what's up, everybody? Yeah, it's dark out. Let's go ahead and get these one-hour ribs done or started. Get some lighter cubes going on. So here, you see this fire ring? You guys saw my barbecue mail? Yeah, that's just from Mr. Greg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, lift this off of here. So you guys can see what's going on. Wow, look at how big that thing is. We're gonna do three slabs of ribs and I'm gonna try to get these ribs done in one hour or less. Let's go ahead and get this started. I'm gonna dump this whole bag in here. Wow, look at that. It fit almost two bags in here. I'm not gonna need more than this. So all I'm gonna do is, uh, hold on guys, let me grab my uh, apple wood chunks. Get a little smoke flavor going on in here. These are kind of small. So I'm just gonna add three chunks. <clears throat> kind of bury them in there a little bit. Man, Greg. Oh, and by the way, I did uh, spray this down with Pam so it is all coated so it'll be nice and black after this cook. Let's go ahead and take our lighter cubes. Just gonna set two of them, one right here. About one right there. Uh, grab my lighter. Here it is. All right. So what we're gonna do is just let this thing catch and we shall return. Here's a close up of this uh, beast basket from Mr. Greg. Oh man, this thing is gonna be so cool. I cannot wait to see how many cooks I could do in one burn in this thing. And that's one whole bag of charcoal. Easily will fit a whole nother bag. Wow. Really impressed there, Mr. Craig. All right. We shall return when this thing comes up to temp. 
And I'm just going to let this thing blaze. And we'll get them rib, ribs hung in no time. All right, everybody. All I'm going to do here is let those uh, lighter cubes burn out because they have a nasty smell to them while they're burning. And once the lighter cubes are burnt out, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on, shut the top vent, and then keep the bottom vents wide open, let it come off the temp, uh, let's say 400 degrees. <laughs> we might even go to 450. Maybe we get these things done in 45 minutes. Let's see if I could bust a record here. The ribs are going to be, they're already pre-seasoned. I seasoned them with the Joe's Barbecue House hot rub and the SPG on both sides. They're already pre-hooked. So next time you see me, we're going to hang the ribs and let's see what we could do with these. All right, everybody, this pit is fired up and we're sitting at 475 here at the top lid. And over here down at the center section, we're pretty close to about 425 or so, which is right where I want to be. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put these ribs on. These are coated with the Joe's Barbecue House SPG and the uh, hot rub. Whoo, that's hot. I'm gonna hang them right here in the center. Okay, everybody, they're hung. We'll put the lid back on. And we're gonna let these things rock and roll. I'll probably end up turning the bottom vents down about halfway, because this thing is fired up. I wouldn't mind keeping this, uh, the center section here at about 400, just to see what we could produce. Uh, I'm gonna set a timer for 45 minutes and let's see what happens. Holy crap, guys, look at that thing go. You would think that's dirty smoke, but it's not. We're running at 375 degrees over an open flame. Oh, man. Look at all them juices falling from them ribs and all that flavor coming right back up into it. I hope I could pull this off in 45 minutes. That is my goal tonight. So let's see what happens. All right, everybody. I know I didn't show the timer up in the beginning, which I wish I would have. But if you guys can see that, we got about four minutes left. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Four minutes left. That's the 45 minute mark. And we're going to check these babies when this timer goes off. I am hoping I pull the record for 45 minute ribs. And I tell you what. I will do this live. I'm, I don't know if I can do this on my cell phone because I don't know if I have enough subscribers or enough um, uh, watch minutes or watch hours, whatever. Uh, I heard you have to have so much to, uh, or so many subscribers to go live on your cell phone. But regardless, I could do it in my Facebook group, Joe's Barbecue House. Um, 45 minute ribs, yeah, I could prove it. I wish I would've got the time and the timer when I started it. I'm sorry, I didn't do that. Uh, hope you guys could trust me on this, you know, because obviously I'd done it in one hour and I didn't show the timer in that either. And, you know, I, f I feel really bad for that. So I'm gonna have to prove this. Not only could I do it in one hour, I wanna try to do these in 45 minutes. We're gonna find out how these turn out. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, we got 17 seconds to go to clear our 45 or 45 minutes here. Go ahead and show you. That's right. Let's see what I've done here. This could be a big time fail. But we're going to find out because Mr. Zach over here is going to hold 
the cutting board while I put these on there. Oh, look at that pullback. Oh my God. Let's see how they look. Nice. Oh. Yeah, they got a nice floppy state to them. There you go. Let's grab this one. Wow. Look at that. See that, guys? Look at that pullback. Oh, my God. Look at the color on those. Let's check the last one. Oh yeah, we're looking good. This is very promising, guys. You got this? Yep. So all I'm gonna do is tint these with foil for about 10 minutes, that's about it. And then we're gonna see what we have. We're gonna cut into these bad boys. Take them inside. Take a C. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, who's ready to try some 45-minute ribs? Me. Yeah. All right. This guy right here. Cool. Look at the floppy state on them. Look at the juices down there. Can you guys see that? Can you see that? 45-minute ribs. I'm going to go ahead and cut into one of these bad dogs. And who wants to be the first taste tester? Hey. You? Here, let me flip them over so I get the right angle on the ribs. All right. Look at that. Look at the juices in that. Can you guys see that in the camera over there? I don't know if you can, but either way, there you go, brother. Let's try to, who, who wants to be the next one? I'll take it. There you go. Give me one second. To grab one real quick. <laughs> so what do you think? Oh, very good. Really like the kick at the end. Oh yeah, because I got the Joe's. Um, no, it's my uh, Joe's Barbecue House uh, hot rub. Oh, I like that. If you like hot things? Uh, yeah, I'll get that rub. All right, dig in, guys. Someone grab one. Grab one. Hey man, can you grab me one? Yeah, bird. So what do you guys think? I like the hot stuff. You like the hot stuff, huh? I do. Every time I come over, I always get kicked by some stuff. Oh, it's good. Who hasn't had one yet? Go ahead, Mr. Vinny. Let's see here. Let's grab into another one of these. Ken, you going to make it, man? I don't know. Was it a little too spicy for you there? I'm getting a little kick in me. <laughs> no, it just got me by surprise. Like, it's... I, God, I hear nothing but chomping over here. Mike, you like it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just the right amount of kick at the end. Right amount? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta begin. So 45 minutes, is it a winner? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. 10 out of 10. You guys seen it here? 45 minute ribs. No doubt. Wow. These are good. These are really good. I'll get you guys a close up here in a minute. All right. Check this out, guys. Juicy, tender ribs. Let's see if you guys get that close up there. Here, somebody else picked up them ribs. Show them in the camera. Point them right about there. A little twist. Now what I want you to do is take a bite right out the middle there. And let's show that bone. Wow, nothing but bone. 45 minute ribs. I think that might be a record, guys. That might be a record. Nice, juicy. Oh my God. How many times do I want to say that? Seems like everybody liked them so far. Oh, yeah. A little spicy for some people. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> and this guy over here, he's just tearing them up. That's awesome. All right. So next time we do this, we're going to do it live to show you the truth in 45-minute ribs. Look at the color. Oh, yeah.